Hello and welcome back to MediaBeaster.com's Media Beat. I'm Alex Wepper, the editor of Sports Newser, and once again I am joined by Stephen A. Smith. Stephen, thanks for being here. Absolutely, it's good to be here. So I wanted to talk about a couple of recent, uh, you know, news events that have happened in the sports world. Okay. Get your take on it. Kobe Bryant was recently fined by the NBA for shouting slur at an NBA ref. When you saw that, what, what, were your, what went through your head? Well, first of all, you can't say stuff like that in this day and time. We all know that. He used the slur towards the, that, 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 you know, the homosexual community finds offensive. He was upset about a particular call that was not made. The commissioner of the NBA fined him $100,000. It was predictable and appropriate. Uh, Kobe Bryant apologized, which was predictable and appropriate. But he also went on to elaborate about how he didn't want that to be a reflection of how he really is or how he really feels. A lot of times, you know, I had people talking to me about, well, you know what, what's the big deal? And why did he say that? And, and I said to them, listen, in the context of Kobe, in that particular moment, it's not a big deal at all. He got fined. It's over with. But in terms of our society as a whole, especially as a black person, we live in a community that's incredibly sensitive to the N-word. Well, if somebody else said that to us, what would happen to them? So why is it not fair that somebody needs to be reprimanded for saying something that the homosexual community finds offensive? It's really not about Kobe. And the NBA finding Kobe is not about what Kobe said. It's about exhibiting a level of sensitivity towards different communities that exist within our country. Because the NBA doesn't dissect the dollars that it collects. It doesn't sit there and say, well, we get this from the black community, we get this from the white community, we get this from the Asian community, we get this from the Hispanic community. They count the dollars. It's all green. You know what? And even if you're a homosexual, we're going to take your money too. So as a result of that, you have an obligation to be incredibly sensitive to what offends them. And the fact that it's offensive to them it doesn't matter how the rest of us may feel about it. If you are a homosexual and you consider such a slur offensive, then it's relevant and it needs to be dealt with, period. In today's culture, you know, athletes are celebrities. They're constantly followed by cameras. And at this point, it, you know, if they say anything anywhere, it's probably going to be on YouTube or something. So I got news for you. It's not just athletes. I have to go through that. I'm a journalist. I have to go through that. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly, you know, people p pulling out their cell phones, taking pictures, trying to tape conversations, acting like I don't know they're trying to tape conversations, all type of slick nonsense. People heckle you. They try to bait you into doing things or what have you. It's a real sad, pathetic society that we live in in this day and time because you've got a lot of people out there uh, that are just that way. Um, and they don't want to go out there and they don't want to work their tails off and, and bust their tail to make ends meet and to be the best that they can be. If they can find a quick, easy fix, they will do it. And if baiting you into a particular situation where they could ultimately uh, entice you to do something stupid that would ultimately cost you money and put money in their pockets, they don't mind. And it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And that's why very few athletes trust anybody. And people like me trust even less. So do you think that this, the current media culture kind of, you know, uh, encourages athletes and journalists and anyone to kind of hold back a little bit or do you have to kind of break through and say, you know what? Well, I'm certainly the media culture encourages that, but I don't think it's the media's fault. I think it's the viewing public's fault. You know, I, I love when people sit there and say, y'all all negative, negativity sells. Well, who the hell's buying it? If you weren't buying it, we wouldn't sell it. How do you deal with criticism? You know, I mean, if some, you know obviously there's anyone now can just lob a, you know, <clears throat> lob a criticism at you at, at Twitter, that uh, there's a million ways people can criticize you. So how do you, do you just let it, you know, glide off? What do you do? A lot of it I let roll off my back. Some of it I confront if I think people are crossing the line. But in my heart of hearts and in my mind, I really don't give a damn. I mean, I just, I can't emphasize enough how little I care. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me when nobody's criticizing me because then I'm not doing something. I am a journalist by trade. My opinions come from facts that have been disseminated to the masses or facts that I've acquired to myself that is yet to be disseminated to the masses. I make sure that my arguments have substance. I don't talk out of both sides of my you know what. It doesn't happen that way. So when people come at me, it's usually not because of what I have to say. It's the way that I have to say it. It's how I look. It's how I carry myself. It's how I choose to communicate. I don't spew a bunch of profanity. I think my vocabulary is pretty decent. I think I have a decent command of the English language. My message is clear. So what is your problem? 
Your problem is usually not with what I have to say, it's the fact that I'm saying it. Interesting stuff. Good advice. Mm -hmm. This is MediaBeaster.com's Media Beat.